This video is brought to you in part by the patrons of the Lazy Eyebrow, and from the comments and watch time from viewers like you. Thank you! Why hello YouTube, greetings from the Lazy Eyebrow to the review for Studio Series Soundwave. Please excuse the lack of a cold open, couldn't think of a good one, and instead of trying to force a joke I wasn't happy with, or not make a video until I thought of a good one, I decided to forgo the whole thing altogether and make a review because GOSH DARN IT LOOK AT THIS VEHICLE! Studio Series Soundwave hails from the third movie, where Result Mode is a sleek Mercedes SLS AMG in its absolutely scrumptious Alabeam Silver. That's the name of the color of the actual car, by the way. Not the scrumptious bit, that's my terminology I'm using here. The Alabeam bit. What a name. What a color. It's such a deep, rich metallic silver that just sparkles and looks fantastic under this light against the dark background. And yes, to those that have seen other reviews or own the figure, this has been slightly customized. The most obvious modification I made is I painted the inside of the windows with acrylic black from Model Master. This was a lot better than the normal clear that they were. And while I do appreciate that, yes, these windows would be clear under normal circumstances, you also shouldn't be able to see robot junk thrown in there like some rich guy in his SLS went to the junkyard and scored on practically brand new body paneling that actually matched his car. Only a little bit of a scratch on one fender, but that's alright, it can buff out, but he forgot to phone a friend of the truck because he's just not about to leave that there, so he jams that into his two-seater and figures out how he's going to tetris himself on in there like some origami swan. As for not completely obvious modifications though, the headlight went from this lame, yellowish, discolored plastic looked to chrome with the use of Molotov chrome penwork. All the venting has been picked out in black, as it used to be unpainted, and that just wasn't doing it for me. Amber side marker lights were added as they are completely absent for some reason. The detail in the mirrors has been done with a fine tip marker. The brake indicator above the rear window has been molded out, but they didn't bother adding paint, so I did. And taillights were spruced up by adding black to the outer perimeter and redoing the red inside because the dull red and unpainted border really just wasn't doing it for me. So yeah, details now worthy of this incredible alt mode. Just look at it. Like, just take a breather and just look at it. Truth be told, Mercedes isn't one of my favorite car manufacturers. In general, I find their design to be, like, way too posh for my tastes. But the SLS is just so good looking, and this Studio Series mold just gets it, and they just went all out on this. Like, I know they're just indentations, but the fact that someone took the extra time to insert these lines into the mold is incredible. Like, we have accurate mesh grilling, and not just in the center, but beneath the headlights and on the two lower bumpers, the engine vents on the side and the top of the hood, and the aero vents on the back bumper. That molded design I picked out in black on the mirror? Unnecessary, but accurate to the car. The lines for the gullwing doors are present. The door handles accurately molded in. Like these three squares aren't molded this way without reason. This long rectangle is the door handle, and when the car is locked, it's actually flush with the body of the car. This center square, however, in the real world application, you can press on it to get the handle to pop out if, say, the mechanism when you unlock the car stops working. And the fact this was research for a Transformers toy? Outstanding! The wheels are incredibly well detailed with the Mercedes badge molded into the center of the rim itself, but don't let that distract you from the painting I did in there. Popping off the wheels reveals an incredible addition to the figure. Now in Earthrise Cliff I went on and on about the discs and how cool they were, while Studio Series Soundwave goes one step further in that it has molded calipers for our drilled rotors. How amazing is that? Now normally I would attempt to paint the rotor chrome, however seeing as how A, this is a really tight spot, and B, it was already painted the metallic silver, I decided it would be easier to paint around it and give the whole wheel well the blackout treatment. As for the rotor itself, I gave it a coat of yellow, which makes it accurate to the movie. Personally, I like red calipers myself, as does New Age apparently, though they also seem to like molding calipers into rims for some reason. But Studio Series, man, drilled rotors and calipers? This may or may not have been why I made the review, just saying. Finally, on the back, more of that molded in panel lines. This whole section is the trunk, that's pretty obvious. This section though? That's a spoiler. On the actual car, this sits flush with the car until you hit a certain speed and then it extends and changes the shape of the airflow and whatnot, but again, the fact they took the extra time to stop, put that in, amazing. Just front to back, this is such a gorgeous alt mode that either the fact that it was licensed made it happen or the designers behind this one had a passion product on the mind and went to great lengths to make sure that every last detail in the molding aspect was painstakingly accurate, I'm not sure which. 
Maybe it was both? Who knows? The fact that this is the case makes this probably one of the coolest Studio Series alt modes that have come out of this line. I appreciate it, and I hope you appreciate it too. Now all of that 5 minute gushing over vehicle mode aside, that's not to say it's perfect. I have some issues, most of which involve paint. For one, that I had to paint the grilling at all is kind of a shame. They got the center bit, and that's where it ended. When the molding team spent so much time making sure everything was there. And it's not just the grilling either that I took issue with. The back of the trunk had some of the metallic come off, and any auto body employee can tell you metallic is nigh impossible to color match, and I suffered from that fact when trying to repair the paint chipping. The body paneling doesn't line up color to color. This is especially seen on the front where the paneling that contains the head transformation is a different shade than the rest of the hood. The headlights were the sour milk color, like they pulled it directly from the Combiner Wars breakdown. So yeah, in general, beautiful sculpt, great color choices, terrible and minimalist paint accenting. That aside, the other thing that really gets my goat is the back doesn't seem to want to snap together. But I guess it's not the end of the world. Like, it's a deluxe movie figure. I get that Masterpiece quality isn't the name of the game here. Oh well. Now for some features. That part of the hood I mentioned earlier can spin around for some crazy hood ornament that gives Bone Shaker a run for his money in the Scare Factor department. Personally, I like it when heads can rest somewhere on the alt mode while everything else about the car remains more or less intact. It amuses me to say the least. Huh. SLS just unlocked. Hey kid, why let me take you for the ride of your life? Heck yeah I do! But that's not the only hood ornament he comes with. Studio Series Sound doesn't get to come with a blaster, instead opting for a laser beak accessory. This can plug into the roof like the strangest Bentley promotional tie I've ever seen in my life. For size comparison, the only other Bay Movie Decepticon I have in my collection, and that being Barricade, who was also in Dark of the Moon. He was one of those blink and you miss it cameos that only makes an appearance in odd numbered Transformers movies. So going by that line of logic, I'm sure we'll see him somewhere in the Bubble Movie, movie sequel, considering that's like Transformers 7. Speaking of the Bumblebee movie, here's the size comparison stacked up to those two main characters, Camaro B and Marmon Optimus. Classics Nissan 350Z homage and GDO 69 Challenger homage. And finally, 137 scale Evo X and Siege Sideswipe. So to sum up, Studio Series Soundwave is a wonderful model of a Mercedes AMG SLS in Alabeam Silver. The detail from the molded grille down to the exhaust detail at the back to the extensive brake detailing is sublime, and honestly, this is a fantastic model car for only 30 Canadian dollars. Oh yeah, and as an added bonus, you can make him a robot too. I mean, that's totally optional, but I mean it was included, so we should probably talk about it. Right after this commercial break. The Transformers will return after these messages. We now return to the Transformers. Alrighty, it's time to take this beautiful SLS and transform it into one of those bay formers. Start by taking the front of the car and rotating it down. On the back, unclip everything to get ready to start moving. Open the doors up, separate the top from the bottom of the car, rotate around the rear portion of the car to form feet, and then go ahead and separate them. Unclip and rotate around the fronts of the front fenders, rotate around the head unit, on the back fold the entirety of the top of the car into a little backpack, rotate and clip the waist into the chest, pull the hands out, separate the door from the fender and fold the window over. Then move the arm down. Peg the shoulders into the chest and you're done. Now let's get laser beak transformed. Brace yourself, this guy makes MP36 look like an action master. Start by flipping laser beak over, then fold on the feet. Congrats, you did it! And here we are, Studio Series Soundwave in robot mode. It's, uh, alright. It's a Bayformer. About the only thing I appreciate about these designs is the way things transform and how all of what one might call kibble is used in the robot more in an organic way, if you'll excuse the inaccurate description. That aside, though, the overall aesthetic is... weird. Here's what I do appreciate, though. This is quite the well-modeled rendition of the Dark of the Moon variant of Soundwave. Everything is right where it should be. They even modeled and painted the fake rear fenders that would become his thighs, and that's really cool. That's kind of it, though. My main issues with the figure more or less has to do with the idea of the character itself, because yet again we're presented with another great Decepticon. And that's sort of my issue with the Bavers. The majority of the time, the Decepticons are shown to be dull, gray, and boring, and they don't stand out. And I'm aware marketing deals are a thing. They pretty much dictated the entirety of the Transformers movies. And AMG Yellow Beam Silver was the color they made the most of. But in my research, I found there's another stock color you could get for this car. 
And that was AMG Daytona Blue, which was this fantastic, dark, metallic blue color. It just looks so grand. So let's just say alternate timeline-y stuff here. What if this was the sound wave we got? Where all the robot parts we don't see in vehicle mode were silver, but the body part stayed this rich, metallic blue. Well, it may only be a digibash, but I'm thinking of making this a custom one day if I ever get a second one. Heck, I might even do this to this one. We'll see. Regardless, this is what we got, an entirely silver sound wave to add to our growing ranks of desaturated Decepticons. Color aside, his design is rather neat. I enjoy how the wheels end up on his shoulder like that, though this presents a different issue and that's the arms are situated really, really weirdly. I mean, you can totally overcome this by simply angling down the chest, but then he looks all hunched over and weird. Anyway, nitpicks about color and the hunchback of Notricon aside, Soundwave comes with an accessory. Sticking out his arm reveals a perch for his loyal mechano bird, that being Laserbeak. It's an accessory that's comes with the Soundwave since the beginning of time, and the fact that yet another Soundwave gets to have a Laserbeak arm perch is pretty darn cool. Unfortunately though, this Laserbeak is just one solid piece of rubbery plastic. Just sits there, looking his robot birdie best. Uh, I basically want to know Studio Series Laserbeak when. I don't really care what he turns into. He could be the printer, the LCD TV, or Pink Bumblebee for all I care, which should be real weird. Either way, I think it'd be cool to have a transforming robot bird, but I doubt we'll ever get to see it. Articulation includes a ball-jointed head with a limited range of left and right, but up and down is pretty free movement. Shoulders spin and move out, biceps swivel, elbows bend, legs go up, knee bends, and that's kind of it. No ankle tilt, or really anything past the knee, making for some really jank movement and proportions. Not that I assume Soundwave would kneel for anything, but like, dang. Another interesting thing I find are his hands. We seem to have a return of the molded hands, though for whatever reason these aren't really 5mm, and if they are, it's just barely making it, making it really hard for him to hold anything. I mean, no, he didn't come with any weapon accessories, but how else are you supposed to recreate that scene of him about to completely nuke Bumblebee's head just for him to get distracted by some noise somewhere? For size comparison, Studio Series 07 Bumblebee... Studio Series Retro Prime, Dropkick and Shatter, Prime Soundwave, Siege Soundwave, and finally, Masterpiece Soundwave, with Laserbeaks to compare to. And yeah, I know this isn't Masterpiece, but it really is a shame that Laserbeak is just a static rubber bird and this guy gets to fold up into a rectangle. Meanwhile, Barricade was a thing two movies prior and got to eject Frenzy like some knockoff Soundwave. So that was my review for Studio Series Soundwave. To sum up, I'm not a fan of the Bayverse robots and how colorless most of the Decepticons are, though I do appreciate how close this one strives to accuracy with what was on screen for a total of three minutes in a two and a half hour movie. What I do like, however, and this is one of the major reasons I bought it at all, is this insanely awesome take on a transforming AMG SLS. Like, this is just such a beautiful alt mode with loads of detail picked out from bumper to bumper, and I really do appreciate just how much work went into this alt mode. It really makes me wish the rumors are true about an upcoming Studio Series Mirage because to see this level of detail in a transformable version of one of my favorite cars of all time, count me in. This has been the Lazy Eyebrow. <laughs>